a, it is the case that has captivated many in America. And now we know how Gabby Petito was murdered. Yeah, a coroner says that Petito was strangled. And what does that mean, though, for Brian Laundrie, the only person who may hold the answers but is still nowhere to be found? Attorney Steve Greenberg joins us right now to give us his legal perspective. It's good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Well, you know, Brian Laundrie has been named the person of interest in this case, the only person of interest in this case. And, you know, we don't know, Steve, where he's at or his whereabouts, although there has been a couple of sightings, supposedly. But does that make him guilty, you know, just that he's a person of interest in the legal sense? Well, it only makes him guilty in the legal sense if he's found guilty by a jury. Look, there's a number of reasons why they'll call someone a person of interest, which is really just another way of saying suspect. Uh, once they say that, you know, that, that he is actually the person or he is going to be the defendant or they formally charge him, a lot of legal things go into place, including speedy trial rights once he's arrested. And that sort of makes it more difficult to investigate the case. What they're doing now is they're just taking as much time as they need to put all the pieces together and, and they can't find them. Uh, I said before, I, I frankly believe that when they ultimately find this young man, they're going to find probably that he killed himself somewhere. I know that's something that's unpleasant to say, and a lot of people want to see him brought to justice, but I just don't see how someone can avoid a manhunt like this for so long unless they, they have done something like that. Steve, let's clarify and reiterate, what kind of evidence here do police need in order to charge him with murder? Well, they've got a circumstantial case. He is with her. They have evidence of the prior domestic incident. There may be more than just that one. We don't know. That would be admissible in all likelihood at a trial. He was the only one with her, and she is found strangled. And obviously, you don't strangle yourself. So they've got a pretty good circumstantial case. Then he returns to Florida without her and says absolutely nothing about it as far as we know and just goes on uh, goes back to his house and so forth so you know he knows that the person he's traveling with has disappeared and he does nothing that that seems like a pretty strong circumstantial case well if, if, from the parents perspective i mean it looks like they've got an attorney already talking to the media so it looks like they've lawyered up um, in this case already if they choose they don't have to say anything to anybody and it would really be the onus on the fbi to put this case together and come up with criminal charges am i right well it's it's probably going to be a state case so it would be on the authorities in wyoming ultimately because that's where the body was found and that's where the incident likely took place. The FBI will, of course, assist. Uh, yeah, the parents will, as you said, lawyer up, and they already have, so they'll try and remain silent. But ultimately, a prosecutor could give the parents immunity and force them to testify about what they know. Now, in all likelihood, even if he told his parents that he did this, their parents, they're probably not going to say that. They probably would lie for their son, but I don't think that they need that. Uh, certainly the parents aren't going to be able to claim that he returned home with Gabby and then she just left and no one knows what happened to her. Steve, so many twists and layers and turns to this case. Appreciate your legal perspective this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right.